Hello everybody, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. Now before we begin, as always, I want to say I hope you guys are doing well, hope you guys are surviving, having fun in engineering, because again, that's what it's always about, having fun, and you guys are laughing at me saying, Clayton, you're an idiot, of course we're not having fun, we're probably drowning in math and drowning in chemistry and all those other fun courses, but uh, I'll always say it, I hope you guys are having fun, so <laughs> yeah. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about trust analysis. In the last video, we talked about trusses as a whole, and we talked about some assumptions we make when it comes to trusses. We talked about stability, and we talked about zero force members. But I teased you all. I teased you all because I didn't actually show you guys how to figure out the forces in trusses. I told you guys that that's our main goal, is to find the forces in these truss members, but I didn't show you guys how to do it. Well, don't worry, that's what this video and the next video are for. So as we're going to see, there's going to be two methods that we use to determine the forces in trusses. The first one is the method of joints, which we're going to cover in this video. And the second one is the method of sections, which will be the topic of the next video. Good news for you guys, though. Both methods are actually really simple. They're nothing too crazy, and you guys shouldn't have a problem with it. There's typically one problem that always leads to students getting the wrong answer, but we're going to talk about it in this video, so you guys should be good to go. So let's begin. Now, the first of the two truss method analysis is the method of joints. All right, so again, there's two, method of joints, method of sections. In this video, we're doing the method of joints. And the method of joints is very simple. We say that if a truss is in equilibrium, then every joint inside of the truss must also be in equilibrium. Therefore, if we're given a truss that has two loads on it, we can actually take this truss and explode it into every joint. Now you guys are saying, what do you mean explode? Well, I mean this. Instead of taking the truss as a whole, we can separate it into all of its joints. Now, if we look here, we basically went from one free body diagram to six of them. We have one for every joint. Now, what's nice about this is we can actually analyze each joint separately. So this one that I've highlighted right here, we can analyze this using force equilibrium. And if we look at this, it all interacts at the same point. So this is actually just a case of particle equilibrium which is good because we actually don't have to consider moments. So this is why it's called the method of joints. We take our truss and we simply analyze every joint inside of the truss. Now you guys may be saying, all right, Clayton, well, how exactly do we do this? Well, it's actually very simple. It follows a nice procedure. So the first procedure in any truss problem, whether it's method of joints or method of sections, is actually we want to draw a free body diagram of the entire truss and solve for the support reaction. So this is going to be very common moving forward where the first thing we want to do is always solve for support reactions. So in this particular case, I would use the free body diagram on the left side. Again, I'm going to have my three unknown support reactions, two for the pin, one for the roller, and I can use my three equations of equilibrium to solve for those support reactions. After that, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the joint that I'm interested in. So let's say inside of this truss, I'm really concerned about the force in member AE. So what I can do is I can take this particular joint and use this as my free body diagram. Now, if we look here, we can actually solve for this joint using our particle equilibrium. So remember for particle equilibrium, because we don't consider moment, we have two equations in our 2D scenario. And if we look at this free body diagram, we actually only have two unknowns. It may look like four unknowns, but remember in step number one, that's where we solve for our support reaction forces. So when we get to this step, AX and AY, we already know what they are. So therefore we have two unknowns, AE and AB. And again, two unknowns, two equations, we can use some of the forces in the x equals zero and some of the forces in the y equals zero to basically solve for AE as well as AB. And that's it. That's actually the method of joints. It's actually really simple. However, there's going to be some tips I can help you or share with you guys to hopefully help you. Again, it's actually as simple as it looks, but it's garbage. And the reason why it's garbage is because we had six free body diagrams. We had six joints we had to consider. So a very typical question using the method of joints will ask you to solve for every single force component inside of that truss. So again, it's easy, but it's kind of garbage because we have to create six free body diagrams. We have to analyze all six. It just becomes time consuming. Now, there are some things that can help us when it comes to this analysis or help you guys from making very common mistakes. The first one is start at the ends 
and work inwards. Basically, you want to start at the support reactions and then work your way inside of the truss. So again, let's say that we had this uh, exploded truss from our last uh, slide. And in this case, let's say that we're very interested in that very top member EF, the one at the very top. If we were to start right in the middle and analyze joint E, well, we have a problem because we actually have three unknowns. Remember, for particle equilibrium, we have two equations. Therefore, we can all only solve for two unknowns. So in this case, we actually can't do too much. So this is why we have to start at the ends where our support conditions are. So if I wanted to, I can analyze joint A first. And remember, it looks like it's four unknowns, but it's actually only two because in the first step, we solve for AX and AY. Therefore, we have two equations and we have two unknowns. So in this particular case, we can actually solve for AE as well as AB. Now from there, we can say, all right, well, if I just solve for AE, then I can go back to joint E, and now my three unknowns actually just went down to two unknowns because I figured out what AE is. If this is the case, I can now solve for joint E using my two equations of equilibrium. So again, we want to start at a joint that we can solve for and slowly work our way into the truss. There's the first tip. Now, the second tip is going to be the most important one. If you guys can take one thing from trusses from me, take this one right here, and that is keep consistent sign convention. Every time I give the truss assignment to students, they have no problem using equilibrium. They have no problem with free body diagrams. They always have a problem with sign convention. And the reason why is this. Let's take a very simple case, and let's say that we have this member right here. Again, we said we have two equations, two unknowns we can solve for this member. And let's say somehow we get that AE is equal to negative 10, which basically means that AE is in compression. So here's the tip. If you have a member and you calculate it to be in compression, always draw the rest of the joints as if it was in tension, and then just use the negative value. Why is this? Well, let's show you guys this. What do you mean by uh, always draw its intention? So let's say we get AE is equal to negative 10, and then from there I move on to joint E. What I would do in joint E is I would still have AE as tension. So notice that my arrow is still pointed away. We know it's in compression, so the arrow should be swapped, but I kept it in tension, and then for the value of AE, I put negative 10. And the reason why is because I find that the number one uh, mistake students make is they'll either flip the arrow and keep the negative, so it's wrong, or they won't flip the arrow and change it to positive, so it's wrong. So again, we want to keep that consistent sign convention. So again, we know that AE is actually 10, but it's pointed kind of up and to the right. And the math actually accounts for this if we keep consistent sign convention. If I were to go summation of forces in the X, what's going to happen is I'm going to have minus minus. So the first minus here comes from the idea that we have it pointed left. Remember, we know that it's actually pointed to the right, but we always want to assume tension. So we're going to keep it pointed left and therefore we get a negative sign. But the trick comes in here. When we plug in the actual value of AE, instead of putting 10, we say that it is negative 10. So at the end of the day, we have minus negative 10, so it becomes plus 10. So that's what I mean by keep consistent sign convention. Always keep your free body diagrams, all the uh, truss member forces, as tension. And if you somehow get a compressive force, <laughs> not somehow because it's very common, it's, it's not very rare to get a compressive force. If you get a compressive force, all you do is just add the negative to the actual magnitude. You don't want to try swip swapping the arrows. That's a, that's a surefire way to start getting some marks taken off. And, and the problem is, is let's say we get AE wrong. Well, then the next joint will be wrong and the next joint will be wrong. So it's one of those, uh, I, I don't know, like when you touch water and the waves go through, this creates waves. You get one joint wrong while well, every other joint is also going to be wrong. So. Please keep consistent sign convention. It's the number one mistake I find all students make when it comes to trusses. But other than that, that's it for the method of joints. Again, nice and simple. Hopefully you guys don't have too much of a problem with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next lecture video.